Hi, Craig here from Craig Rogers Photography. A question I'm always being asked at the moment is how? How do you possibly ID the birds? You see a bird, you hear a bird, you know what it is. Well, actually, I've, I've learned a lot over the years, but in truth, I'm not really a bird spotter. I don't have this vast information of bird life. So yes, I know quite a few calls, I know quite a few songs, and of course I know quite a few birds to ID them by um, visualizing them. But like I said, I've, there's lots of species I don't know, and I never pretend to be a bird watcher and, and know exactly what every species is. So how do I work it out? When I'm in the field, I'm taking photographs and I suddenly find something, I don't know what it is. How do I work it out? Well, actually, I use an amazing app called um, Merlin. Now Merlin's developed by the Cornell Lab, you might see many books that they do. They're an ornithology university department based in the US um, and they do fantastic work. And um, one of the things they do is this app. So let's have a quick look at the app. You'll see I've got a, a shortcut on my homepage here. Now the app is available for Android and Apple devices. The link is in the um, YouTube information and also the blog that accompanies this. And the great thing about this, not only is it powerful, but it is completely free. Every aspect of this is free. You don't have to have paid add-ons or anything like that. It's completely free. So when you first install the app, you'll get asked to uh, download a database for your own area. Okay, so the, I think the area that, that I've got here is called um, Iberia and the Canary Isles, I think. Okay, which covers, covers the area where I'm in, in Portugal. Uh, that, that initial download is about three to 400 meg, perhaps a little bit bigger, depending on which uh, bird pack you download. But once you've downloaded that bird pack, the app works completely offline, okay? So you'll notice at the moment, I've got the little airplane logo in, uh, in my phone because I'm running in uh, airplane mode. I didn't want any pop-ups coming up while I'm doing the screen grabs. Um, so yeah, if you're in the middle of nowhere and you're gonna uh, want to ID birds, you haven't got a uh, data signal, doesn't matter, it'll work completely offline. So of course you don't also have to worry about your data usage either. Um, it has three basic options in, in this app. Two of them are pretty much what all the other bird apps and, and, and bird ID websites do. So let's go quickly through them. So the first one is start bird ID. Usual sort of thing, where do we see the bird? Now I would say where I am because I'm on uh, airplane mode, it's not gonna find where I am. So let's say uh, Rua de Foninos, which is where I am at the moment. Um, and we'll say today, you can change the date, but we'll say today. And you get a choice of what size bird. So let's say blackbird sized. Okay, so we hit next and they say, what are the main colors? I'm gonna say black. I think you know where this is going. Um, so I'll, you can choose more than one color if you want, but I'll keep it black. It's then gonna say, what, what was the bird doing? Well, I'm gonna say it was in trees or bushes. So this is clearly gonna be a blackbird. Well, I hope it is. Um, we hit identify or access the database. <laughs> the first one that comes up is actually spotless starling. Absolutely, it could be. It's, completely black. Then we've got the blackbird um, and then we've got a common starling and even a greater spotted woodpecker which yep yeah, fits fits the, the bill but there's loads of them in there that it, it thinks uh, you know the, the variables you've put in it will tell you. Now that's all great and there's so many apps that will do that so for instance we look at the blackbird you can scroll through all the different photos that they've got inside the database not only that but you can Actually, if you go into the details, you can listen to all the sounds that the bird does. And I can't play them back because I'm using the phone to actually record the audio now, so I can't play back the sound at the same time. But you can listen to the calls and the songs as well at the same time. And like I said, all this works offline. Okay, if you hit, yes, this is my bird, what it'll actually do, it'll save it. And then when you are next online, it'll upload that to the Cornell Labs database. And then that sort of helps everybody else then because it, it creates um, an algorithm based on, on what people are seeing. So th that's really cool. So, okay, so we'll go back out of that. What else can we do with this app? Well, you can search, hit the on button. We can search through all the birds, okay? We can explore the birds that are in, the, in this current database, of which there's many. And there's little um, shortcuts on the right-hand side for the, the, the species or the family of birds. So if I hit that one, it'll go down to the smaller birds. If we hit that one, I think that's gonna go to all the waders, etc., etc. So you can go through all the, all the birds and of course you select the bird and you've got the same thing where you've got the information, its movements and the sounds. Okay, so that's basically what the Merlin app does. However, it's got the third option, which you may have seen. So if I go back to the main screen, photo ID. This is just genius. It's magic. It's, it's as once someone said to me, it's Harry Potter stuff. Um, it works on pattern recognition. So if you can give this app a picture of a bird, it'll do pattern recognition and it'll come back and give you an answer. Now, I've been using this for about a year and actually I get, I'd say a 98% hit rate. It very rarely lets me down. Um, and even 
terrible quality photos, it'll work. Now I'm going to try something later that I haven't tried before, and this is the first time I'm going to try it, is I'm going to take a photo of a bird with my mobile phone and see if it'll work it out. Now if you ever try taking bird photos with a mobile phone, it's very difficult. But I'll see, see if it works. But actually what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, hopefully something's going to come by, I'm going to take a photo of a bird, I'm then going to get the photo from the camera into the app, and once it's in the app, I'm going to then hopefully ID it. So there's two ways you can do it, okay? And let's get a photo of a bird first and I'll explain both. So, fingers crossed, something comes by. <laughs> ah, okay, so we've got hoopoo. Come on out of the trees, from behind the trees, and... Okay, so what we got? Okay, cool. So I've got a photograph of a hoopoo. So now what I want to do is I want to get that photo out of there onto here. So if you have a fairly modern camera, you might have the capability to transfer the photo from your camera straight into your mobile device. Um, I have that. I have a D850, Nikon D850, so I can use Snapbridge. For those who have tried using Snapbridge, it can be a little bit clunky. Um, but yeah, it's much better than it used to be. But most of the time I don't bother because it's quite a process to get the, the photo from um, the camera into the, the app. I'll just take a photograph of the screen and believe it or not, it works. So if I just open the app up again, just go back to the home and I've got this option photo ID. So if I click that, I get two choices. Choose a photo. So if I've uploaded, a I've copied a photo from the camera onto the phone, I can choose the photo or I can take a photo. And like I said, I'm going to try this out a little later on and see if I can get a, a shot of a bird on my mobile and an idea but for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a photo of the screen now it's pretty sunny at the moment which is great um, so it can be difficult sometimes to get the shot off the back of the screen and if it, if I if it fails for some reason then I will copy it using Snapbridge but let's try and get a photo so I'm going to choose take photo so there's my hoopoo that I just took let's just zoom in on him and I will take a hopefully photo okay so you get the choice to redo and as you can see it's not a particularly great photo but I'm gonna go with that one um, for some reason if you take it uh, portrait mode it flicks it in the app I don't know why but the arrows at the top will flick it around and then if you just move the box and zoom in on the bird as best possible to fill the box and then we hit next it's not gonna ask me where it was now normally it would come up and say where I was but because I've got air uh, plain mode on the phone, it cut, doesn't know my location. So I'm going to edit that and I'm going to hit where we are, Rua de Fonino, which is where we are. The date, I'll leave as it is because it is today, October the 26th, believe it or not. Fantastic day today. And I'm going to hit ID. Oh, look at that. Okay, so from a not a very good photograph on the phone, it's come up and said, yep, it's an Eurasian hoopoo, which is exactly what it is. Okay, so th this is stuff I do quite a lot and I can look through the photos, I can listen to the noise if I didn't have the microphone plugged in. Um, but it actually has come up with some alternatives. It is also saying Eurasian woodcock, which it clearly wasn't. Um, so it's given me two choices. Uh, that's actually a very rare bird around here, but, um, but the hoopoo is not a rare bird, as you know, and it just works. Okay, so it's, it's just incredible how this app works from a not very good photo off the back of my camera. It's done the recognition and come up with this bird and it's, it's just brilliant. And like I said, 98% of the time it works absolutely fantastic. So what happens, you may say, if you travel to another country? Well, actually you can download um, a different bird pack. You're not restricted to just one. You can download more bird packs. Uh, I can't show you how to do that right now because obviously I haven't got data because I'm in airplane, airplane mode. So I'll show you how to do that a little later on. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what happens if you're lucky enough to come across a rare bird. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you know the story about here in uh, the Algarve, we had some green herons um, when Hurricane Leslie, Hurricane? yeah, Hurricane Leslie was here last year, um, two, at least two green herons got blown over with them, or we suspect they did. One was up near Lisbon, one was down on the coast um, near Val de Lobo, Quinta de Lago, I do say. Um, and everyone went mad. We went and took photographs of this bird. So nobody knows where it is right now because it seems to have disappeared. Okay, so I'm going to go back into the app. I'm going to do photo ID and this time I'm going to do choose a photo. Now I've got a green heron photo that I took back when the green heron was here um, and I've put it on the phone ready. So let me just zoom in on the actual bird and hit next. 
You know, it says November the 10th, because that's when it was. Um, that's when we, we spotted the bird. So it's pulled out of the EXIF information. So that was November last year. Um, don't worry about the identification, uh, location rather, because I'm not going to worry about um, clicking that I've seen it. I'm going to hit identify. There we go. So it's come up with green heron. So green heron isn't in my database because it's not a local bird. So even though it's not in my database, it still identifies the bird, which is fantastic. So if you do manage to find a, um, a rare bird, you photograph it, it shouldn't belong here. Wham, there we go. So it's, it's, it's even identified, even though it's not part of the pack. OK, so that's two ways that you can use the, the app, either take a photograph or use the photograph. And I, like I said, most of the time I just take a photograph of the screen and it works nine times out of 10. If I can't quite get a good photo of the screen for the sun or for whatever reason, then I will use SnapBridge to, to copy the file over. Uh, okay, so let's push this app to its limits. Now, I honestly, I've never tried this before. So I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna try and find a bird and I'm gonna take a photograph with my phone. Now, if it becomes a small bird, which it probably will be, because that's what majority of the birds are around me at the moment, um, it's going to be terrible quality on this phone and I might even have to really zoom in to, uh, to get it. And it's just going to be a pixelated mess. So let's go and try it and let's push this app to the limits to see if it can actually identify a bird from a really rubbish photograph. So I'll be right back. Okay, so that was easy. There's some um, power lines just here and I managed to get a bird on the power lines. Now, I actually wasn't 100% certain what it is, but I think it was a linnet. Um, I could hear it calling and I think it was a linnet. Like I said, I'm not always 100% sure, but I'm pretty certain that was a linnet. So here's the photo I took. As you can see, it's, it's awful. If I zoom in, it's a terrible, terrible photo. So what I actually did before I come back on camera is I did a crop of it. Okay, so there's the crop of the, of the bird. Now, I can't tell that's a linnet from that photograph. So how on earth the app is going to? And I said, I haven't put this through the app yet. This is the first time I've done it. So let's open Merlin. Okay, so we'll go back to where we were. Photo ID, choose a photo. Uh, I need to find it in camera. There it is. Okay, so there's my bird. Not a lot to go on. I'm not even going to zoom in. I'm just going to hit next. Yep, it's got the dates because um, actually, yeah, it's got the date. It's got the, even got the location. So identify and it's come back. Wow. Incredible. So it's come up with Comet and Net, Northern Wheat here. A Ryanek was definitely not a Ryanek. So that's the three options he's come up with. And the first option is a common linnet, which is what I thought it was. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. So there you go. That's how good this app is. So what I'm going to do, I am going to re-enable my data. Uh, I'm probably going to get hundreds of notifications come through. So I'm going to re-enable re my data. So I'm going to stop the video and restart it once I've got rid of all my um, downloads that come through. And let's have a look at how you change the options. OK, so I'm just about recovered after that, uh, find, finding a linnet from, uh, from that. So actually, is this, if this, it, you might ask, is this app foolproof? Well, actually, no, it's not foolproof. And if you have a look at that, um, the one outtake that comes up after this video, um, it, that linnet was actually the second time I put it through. Uh, it wasn't the first time I put it through, I was lying. So have a look at the outtake, because it's quite funny, the, the, what it first thought it was. But um, we'll carry on, but have a look at the outtake at the end. Okay, so anyway, um, doing the options that you can have um, for Merlin. So if you click the usual three bar menu, uh, you'll see that bird packs, if I hit bird packs, it'll come up and it'll show you all the bird packs. So you can see Iberian Peninsula is the one that I've got installed. Um, and there's other ones you can have, so Western uh, um, Palaeotic, and you've got Australia, and then it's all alphabetical. And you can download any of these ones, and they're different sizes. Wow, that's a big one. The Costa Rica one is 900 meg. Um, there's a lot of birds in Costa Rica. Uh, so, yeah, so that's how you can download more um, bird packs. Okay, let's go back a bit, and there's one thing that I would recommend you turn on. If you go into settings, there's a thing there that says scientific names. Now, for, re for some reason, but default for me was off. If you turn that on, or in fact, let me turn it off and we'll go back to um, exploring the birds. And you can see all the birds shown there, but there's no ID, uh, there's no um, scientific name. 
So if you're a bit geeky with the bird names like me and turn on scientific names and we go back to explore list, you actually see it gives you the scientific name as well. Why that's an option to turn it off, I don't know, but um, uh, I found that it wasn't turned on by, by default. Turn it on, it gives you the scientific names as well, which is brilliant. So that's all I've got to say about this fantastic app. And like I said, it's completely free for both Android and iOS. Uh, the links to download um, from the App Store or Google Play, um, or Play Store I should call it now, is both in the YouTube um, information and also on the blog on my, on my website. So go out, get this app and enjoy it because it is just, just fantastic. The, the, the brilliant thing behind it is just amazing. And now all I'm going to leave you with is the outtake for the first time when I did that um, look up on the Linnet. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing my... <laughs> home face of looking at the camera when it didn't quite go to plan um, but anyway I'll see you next time cheers bye actually cropped it before we started so I'm going to zoom in slightly okay so I can't tell what bird that is from that very pixelated picture how the app is going to know I don't know so hopefully I hit this and it's going to tell me as a linnet who knows Okay, so yes, I'm in Rue de Fenino, and it's October the 26th, and we hit identify, and it's a barn owl. A barn owl? <laughs> uh, no, it's definitely not a barn owl, but there we go. What other options have we got? So we've got a wheat here, well, it could have been, but it wasn't. A sparrow hawk? Okay, so it thinks it's a barn owl. I've I think I might try that one more time. <laughs>